Hey peeps, it's your girl Daxani and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be giving you my full review on Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon. But for those who have not seen it or are debating on watching it, I will give my mini review without spoilers first and then I'll jump into the spoiler review afterwards. If you would like to jump right into the spoilers, I pinned the timestamp down below in the comments. And now the mini review. Is this movie worth $30? No. No, no it's not. Um, unless you actually have a family or you're watching it with some roommates or something, sure, go for it. Or even if you're just a straight up Disney fan, no one's gonna stop you to spend that $30. But other than that, no, it's not really worth it. And just because I say all of that doesn't mean the movie was not good. It was. I had fun watching it, the fighting scenes were awesome, the animation was outstanding, and I loved how they animated the water and this one land called Talon. All of that was beautiful. Also the lesson, the moral of the story is definitely a great teaching lesson which is trust that I don't think Disney seriously touched on before. However, there are moments in that lesson that can be a bit contradicting. So the story is nice, it's not mind blowing or anything like that, but I can always appreciate that Disney films tried to teach or at least try to start a conversation, which I'll explain more in the spoiler review, but I still think it's a great thing for kids to know and to understand. There are definitely cute characters that are super lovable, like the, that roly-poly looking animal named Tuk Tuk. Also, if you are not into Disney animated musicals, then this may be the one for you. Also, there is a threat in here called the Droon. It is like this purple mist that turns people into stone. If you have a little one, it can be scary, but it doesn't even show up in the film that often, which I'll discuss more in the spoiler review, but that's basically it. The action in this film was definitely so fun to watch. Very entertaining, and I wanted more combat because the fighting choreography in this is top notch, especially for an animated film. And I would love to see more of that in future films. But for this, I gotta say, it's just a one-time watch for me. It was a good movie, but not a great one. Nothing was super memorable for me to make me want to watch this again on my own. I'm kind of jumbling between giving this movie a 7.5, but a 7.8 just to be a little bit more generous. Now on to the spoiler review, so grab your snacks, grab your drawing tablet or your sketchbook if you want to sketch along and just listen to the movie review and let's have a good time. Where do I begin? Well, I love the character design for Korra, wrong company. This is not Korra, uh, this is Raya when she was younger. My bad. Um, but no, all jokes aside, I do love the character design, the features in the face. I love the hairstyles, especially the clothing design. It's, it's the bomb.com. I strive to give my characters some cool badass outfits. I do want to say congrats to Kelly Marie Tran on voicing Raya. I thought she did a really great job. I think people are being way too hard on her because of the role that she had in Star Wars. Uh, she played Rose and a lot of fans didn't like her to the point where they bullied her off of social media. Like what the hell? Like don't come after her, okay? Uh, the director, the writers, they created the character. She just happened to see that that role was open. She auditioned and she got it, okay? She's just trying to get that paycheck so let her do so. I'm not an actor, but I'm a viewer and from what I saw, from what I heard, like she was believable as Raya, okay? I felt what she was feeling in the movie during some intense scenes. So I think she did a great job. Also, fun fact, back in 2019, I went to the D23 Expo and when they announced Raya and the Last Dragon as their new film, they also announced that Casey Steele was going to be voicing Raya. So Kelly Marie Tran was not the first choice. I give my props to Kelly Marie Tran. Like I said, she did a great job. But it's just stuff like this that makes me wonder like, hmm, what happened here? You know, like I try to investigate. And it actually took me a while to find some information on why this change was made. But my boyfriend actually found an article from CBR.com, which I'll link in my description box. But just to summarize it, there were some creative changes that were made. I guess Raya as a character changed and evolved over time. So they thought, well, we need a better suiting voice for Raya now since we made her change so much. So they thought Kelly Marie Tran was more of a better fit. Unfortunately, it wasn't specified on how Raya evolved, but if you would like to read exactly what was said, take a look at the article. It's very short, but I just thought it was an intriguing fact to put in this video. 
Now going back to the design, Sisu's design definitely stands out, at least when she's a dragon. The eyes are definitely the signature Disney eyes and I kind of wish that they took Sisu's design a little further to the next level. But of course, they had to stop at the cuteness in order to sell those merch because your kids gotta have those Sisu plush toys. Am I right? I mean, I would have liked to see more fangs on Sisu and maybe not the exaggeration on the eyes in her dragon form, but that's just me. But I don't know, I think they could have made her look more fiercer looking, not to the point where it's gonna scare kids, but make her look badass, but still keep the colors in there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you guys didn't know, a bunch of Twitter artists came up with a bunch of redesigns on Sisu's look, on how they thought Sisu should have looked like, and I honestly think they're cool. But it's basically fan art at this point because, you know, the movie's out already. Since we're on the topic of Sisu, let's go ahead and talk about Aquafina, who's doing the voice, along with the character design and the personality. She's basically a female version of Mushu. And sure, it totally seems like, you know, it's not original. We've seen this before with Mushu. And, you know, but for me, it's not that big of a deal because I still had fun with Aquafina voicing Sisu. And surprisingly, she wasn't as annoying as I thought she would have been because sometimes Aquafina can be a hit or miss with me. Aquafina did pleasantly well as Sisu. I enjoyed her and I even laughed and call me whack, but I love the inserts of modern references and jokes in Disney films, even though they may not take place in modern day. I love it, okay? Now, I'm going to dive into the villain, well, more of a threat, because from what we see in the trailer, and even half, or well, most of the movie, Namari is looked at as the villain, and she could be, but she's actually part of the lesson that we learned, but I'll talk about that later. The threat, which is the Droon, turns people into stone, okay, and that animation was done so well, it was terrifying. Like, it seemed as though the Droon would run into people, scoop up their soul, and their bodies would turn into stone. And I was kind of shaken by it, almost. However, there's just not enough of the Droon. Maybe it would have taken away a bit of the story, or it would be just too much where the movie is just a little bit longer, but for me, it's just not around enough to make me believe it's that big of a deal. The only way I know is the fact that it turned the main character's father into stone. And on top of that, the Druun's weakness was water. They couldn't cross water at all, which was an okay type of weakness, I guess, for this almighty dark being. But I don't know, I felt like... This was kind of a missed opportunity. Also, I guess I have to put into account that this is a family friendly slash kids movie. So they were probably like, well, we can't make it too scary. But going back to the Droon, by the end, we do get that big interaction with it. But the overall threat didn't make me think for one second, like, oh no, how are the characters going to get out of this? Like I knew they were going to get out, but I don't know, I just kind of like that feeling of actually having doubt. You know, being scared for the characters, that helps me root for them. Like, I feel like I really wasn't rooting enough. Okay, so I wanna talk about Namari. I love Namari, despite what she did. She is basically the cause of Raya having the lack of trust in people, which I totally understand, I get it. Raya was becoming besties with Namari when they were younger. You know, becoming besties with this fellow dragon nerd, only to be betrayed by this fellow dragon nerd. Like, how dare you, Namari? Namari is basically the villain because Raya blames Namari and her tribe, which is um, from this land called Fang, for bringing back the Droon, for breaking the dragon gem. And you know who else blames Namari? All of the other tribes, right? Which is so dumb because I'm like, but y'all were over here just as greedy wanting the dragon gem as well. Namari just happened to get there first. But as Raya states in the beginning of the film, you know, people being people fought over this dragon gem causing it to break. But all of the blame is on Namari. Okay, whatever. But then of course, you know, they get older and then when Raya's already besties with Sisu, Raya 
warn Sisu about Namari and what had happened and that we can't trust that backstabbing Bintari as she called her in the movie and that we also can't trust anyone else, really. However, Sisu was always giving the benefit of the doubt. Every time they would try to go to the different lands, to the different tribes, to get the other pieces of the gemstone, Sisu always talked about, oh, let's give them a gift, right? Because it was like an old tradition. It was as if it was a way to kind of show that we can put trust in people or at least for us to take the first step of showing some type of peace or some type of trust, right? Because that's what the movie's revolving around. However, this is where the whole contradiction is kind of happening here, you know, because Sisu's like, oh, let's give them a gift, let's bring them a gift. And Raya's like constantly telling her, no, we can't trust these people, whatever. Because in the beginning, when Raya first meets Namari when they're younger, right? And they're over there nerding out about dragons. And Namari gives Raya her necklace of Sisu. So when Raya receives this gift from Namari, she then feels like, well, shoot, from one dragon nerd to the other, let me show you where the dragon gem is. As I stated, this is back when they were younger, right? So of course you think like, well, nothing can possibly happen, right? <laughs> Wrong. Namari decides to betray Raya's trust and set out a flare to her people of Fang. So now everybody knows where the dragon gem is. So as for the gift giving, if I was Raya, I would have turned that down too because it's like, look, in my experience, the girl I made gave me a necklace and she betrayed me. When Sisu met Namari for the first time, she saw something in her and tried to persuade Raya to give Namari a chance and to trust her. Because we as the audience also see that like Namari gets emotional after seeing Sisu for the first time, knowing that wow, like the last dragon really does exist, right? And it kind of makes us, well at least it made me feel some type of way, you know? It's like, there's, there's something there, there's a soft spot there, maybe she's coming to this realization like shit, maybe Maybe we should work together. So Raya finally decides to give in, and so she meets up with Namari, only to be betrayed once again, because Namari pulls out a crossbow and is like, give me the gems and give me Sisu. Now hold on, Namari didn't want to do this. She was pressured by her mom to do this because the plan was let's take the gems from Raya and then let's take Sisu because every other tribe is blaming us, Fang, for this destruction and for bringing back the Droon. But if we had all the gem pieces and Sisu, people would be basically applauding us for setting things back to normal and they wouldn't blame us anymore. Namari tries to kind of change her mom's mind, like, no, this isn't right. We probably shouldn't do this. Maybe we should kind of work together with Raya. But of course her mom kind of cuts her off and was like, no, listen to me, little girl. I'm the adult, you listen to me, I'm your mother. It's, you know, that mentality. Raya, on the other hand, is pissed. Why? Because she's being betrayed again by the same person. However, Namari, she's feeling hesitant on pulling the trigger as Sisu's trying to talk her down, but Raya's lack of trust causes her to whip out her blade, causing Namari to shoot her crossbow at Sisu, thus killing her. You can't tell me otherwise, but Raya was actually the cause of Sisu's death. She did that. Why? Because she didn't trust her right? And that's just speaking on one side. The other side of it is like, well, shoot, can you blame Raya? Can you really blame her? This is the second time she's being betrayed. How many times can she be punked by the same person? I'm going to go ahead and throw something else out there too, but I think this is more going towards the directing because I feel like we can fully blame Raya, right? If they kind of design the scene a little bit better. And what I mean by this is like, okay, so the initial scene was Namari had the crossbow up, but she was like slowly pulling back the trigger. Like she was really about to fire her crossbow. And as a viewer, I'm over here getting nervous. Like, damn, she's still gonna pull this trigger. And I can see why Raya really did whip out her blade. She was getting nervous because she saw that Namari wasn't surrendering. She was slowly pulling her finger back on the trigger. And here both can be blamed for the death of Sisu. And Namari even calls out Raya on that which I really liked. I was like, ooh, yeah, you do have a point. 
you do have a point. But at the same time, you weren't put, putting down your weapon. I feel like the only way we can officially blame Raya 100% for the death of Sisu is if Namari was putting her crossbow down or if she was like slowly lifting her finger off of the trigger, but that wasn't the case. So, damn. I'm like, you know, kind of looking back on my words and maybe Namari is fully <laughs> the blame for it. But according to the lesson here um, of the story, they are both at fault. And I bring up the contradictions again. It's just like, can you really blame Raya for not trusting people? I mean, I put my trust in you and I thought we were cool, but you go and betray me. And then on top of that, you betray me for a second time? Shoot, as much as I blame her for the lack of trust and killing Sisu, I also understand where Raya is coming from. Now, I'm an adult, so my view of trust may be totally different from a kid's version of trust, perhaps. And one of my friends did say that maybe towards the end, it's more so about hope or at least the combination of hope and trust. However, it's just the whole story itself and what it's looking like. In order to defeat the Druid, you had to have trust with one another. So when the death of Sisu makes the water disappear, thus the Druid starts going everywhere and attacking people and Raya and her crew help people escape the Druid. But when they all get surrounded by it, including Namari, the pieces of the gem starts losing its protective powers. But the only way to get the power back into the gem was to trust each other. So Raya was the one who suggested to finally trust Namari with the gem, but the other friends that she made along the way didn't want to. They were like, no, we don't trust Namari. After everything she did, this is all her fault. So what did Raya do? She made the first step and gave her piece of the dragon gem to Namari, and then Raya was the one to turn to stone. Then her friends saw and they followed, and they also gave their pieces of the gem to Namari and turned into stone as well. Namari put the pieces back together, everything's looking good. Sisu's brothers and sisters are coming back and they revive Sisu, everything's cool. Some people apparently didn't like the ending where everyone gave their trust to Namari by giving her the gem pieces. Me personally, thought it was great. I even teared up a bit because I love seeing the growth of characters. I was caught off guard when they gave the pieces to Namari. I did think Raya was going to be the one to have this big moment. I mean, technically she did by finally trusting in Namari, but you know, some people didn't like that because they hated Namari. But it, it I mean, to me, this was more impactful than if it was like, well, let's give the pieces to Raya. I mean, because like the rest of her crew already trust Raya. The only person that would be out would be Namari. Like Namari would have been the only person to have put her trust in Raya. But I think it was Raya who needed to learn that lesson of trust the most. So yeah, that's basically it. But I do kind of want to touch more on the whole trust lesson here in this movie and you know definitely get your guys's opinions so comment it below um but i have a friend who is a parent and you know she posts her reviews and stuff on facebook just for her friend friends and family to see and she also has friends who are also parents and they disagree with the whole trust lesson in here because they don't think that their kids should be trusting everybody um, like that the, and and I get it because kids are vulnerable they're gu gullible and kids automatically they just naturally put their trust in people anyways that's just part of their innocence I mean sometimes I kind of think about like if I decide to have kids right and if I had a child and their classmate kept punking them because my kid is like, well, I'm going to trust them. They drew me a picture to say that they were sorry. So I'm going to put my trust in them again, give them another chance. And then my child gets punked again. You know, I don't want that for my kid. I don't even want that for myself, you know, as an adult. But honestly, I think I'm probably just looking way too deep at this point possibly but let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section i'm really curious i rate this movie a 7.5 possibly a 7.8 
just to be a little bit generous out of 10. It was a fun movie. It was, I enjoyed it. Would I go back and watch it again? Probably not unless it was just randomly playing on TV and I caught it on. I would just sit there and watch it. But I wouldn't want to be like, oh, you know what? I feel like watching Raya again, you know, versus like I've seen so many other Disney movies plenty of times because I wanted to. But Raya is just not one of those movies where I would choose to play it again. Well, yeah, so that's it for um, this movie review. I hope you guys enjoyed this movie review. Feel free to have a discussion with me down below in the comments. I really love hearing people's opinions and ideas and theories, all that lovely goodness. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, feel free to subscribe. Don't feel obligated to. It's just a suggestion. And once again, thank you all for listening and thanks for watching. And I shall chat with you soon in the next video. Bye.